Because now this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go get back the blink of an eye. Hold the mana up. And then if he doesn't board wipe. If he boards wipe, I'll just blink of an eye my shipwreck dowser. Hey, what's up guys? It's MTG Gnome here. And today I'm coming at you with a budget build. The only mythic in this deck is Thassa herself. And so what I wanted to try and do was build a budget deck that had basically no rares or mythics. And I initially wanted to do a commander that wasn't rare or mythic, but a couple of the commanders that I tried didn't turn out so well. So I said, let me just try Thassa. She's just really good. It gives you really good value just throughout the game. What we're doing is playing like a kind of like a mid-range control type of shell we're basically trying to just bounce our opponent's stuff counter their stuff while we're getting the benefits of our into the battlefield triggers there is some obstacles that you have to overcome because i felt like we had a lot of draw power from our into the battlefield triggers i didn't put a lot of draw power in here just by themselves like beholding multiverse chemistry's insight and even those were a stretch i almost took those out just to um kind of make the deck more streamlined but what i realized was sometimes you actually do need those extra cards even if it is for mana and sometimes you can be able to multiverse on for two just because you foretell it but every card in the deck is uncommon or common besides thassa one mythic budget build thassa we're just trying to get our etbs basically playing the long game if we're playing an aggressive deck we kind of just get ran over we can we can keep up with some of the some of the other mid-range decks so Let's go check it out. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. This is my first budget build, so uh, I'll be doing more in the future, but I just kind of wanted to change something up before Kamigawa came out. Let's go check it out, shall we? All right, we're up against Orvar. This might be a problem. We have our three lands. We have a bounce spell. We have Siren Storm Tamer. Uh, let's keep it. We do go first. We'll play the Siren turn one. And then we'll see what we get. I'm pretty sure he's got a bounce spell of some kind because uh, it's sticking. When I'm when I'm clicking next, it sticks like it's waiting for him to take priority. So he's probably got a bounce spell. Ornithopter of Paradise. We could bounce that to give him. Nah, let's just bounce Orvar when it comes down. I guess. So turn four, I guess he's gonna put Ovar down, huh? Nah, he's just gonna continue to ramp. Alright. It's got two mana open. So do we try to play Thassa here? Because if he counters Thassa, then we have to wait till turn till we get two more lands, and that's not just just not gonna happen. I think we play Trial of Knowledge, try to get our Try to get some more lands. If he counters it, then oh well. Alright. Oh my goodness. Let's get rid of eyes everywhere. It's really not going to do us any good right now since he is playing blue. He could just swap it. He can activate the second ability easily because he is playing blue, so. We got our land, so that's good. He's also playing the cards that we play. So I'm wondering if he's holding up mana. Let's, th let's try to play Thassa here. Probably gonna bounce it. So this is a really good combo here. We can keep flickering um, this guy. Alerios. He's from the Theros. The Theros Beyond Death that came out a few years ago. But we can keep bouncing this guy to keep making our 3-2 tokens. Pretty sure he's going to target something with the Mana War so he can bounce something. Oh, we do have the Whirlwind Denial. That's pretty, that's really good actually. Let's play the Curator's Ward on the Thassa. So he can't bounce it. Alright. And now we, we just, we just attack now. We could counter it. One denial is decent. Oh, I wonder if he has another. I guess we should have kept 
kept the mana open to um, counter that with Siren Storm Tamer. He can just keep making these if he targets these, because it doesn't say token or permanent. So that might be an issue. No point of bouncing anything. I mean, I kind of wanted to, kind of want him to swing with Ogar so I can kill it. I don't think he's that stupid. Mind Flayer. That's pretty bad. Damn, he had to play that right now, didn't he? Let's play Moonlit Scavengers. He's gonna have to counter, he's gonna have to sacrifice a star and Storm Tamer. Okay, let's go for Ovar. Let's see what he does. Yeah, I mean, I figured he'd do that. But we just do it again. I mean, he has plenty of mana, so it's not like he can't. He makes another copy of Mind Flayer. That's really bad for us. Yeah. That's what I thought would happen. Let's send back the token Mind Flayer. And let's keep the rewind open. Let's keep the rewind open so we can send something back to his hand. We can probably counter counter his Ovar with the rewind. The thing is here is that we don't want to bounce the Mind Flayer. Oh no, let's counter that. No siree. That's really bad. Let's get rid of this Riptide Laboratory. Because Ovar is a wizard. Let's start doing some damage if we can. Make a token. We don't want to send anything back right now. We have this depart the realm, which is going to be good. Something. Maybe we can send Ovar back if he tries to play Ovar. It's going to keep drawing cards, so he can't play Ovar now. Copy of creature I control, huh? Maybe Moonlit Scavengers. Let's send that back to his hand. And we'll see what he does here. That's 12 damage. And we get the W. He couldn't do much there. Let's go. I haven't seen too many Chromium the Mutable decks, so I'm not sure what to expect. Let's keep this because we have Valerios. That's always a fun little interaction between Alerios and Thassa. All right. There's not too many. Not too many. S not what we want to see us draw on turn two. Good thing is we are drawing land, so that's that's always good. We drew that one, so. We will have enough to play Thassa, which might be what he might do. Let's play the Curator's Ward on Hilario, so let's see what he does. Doomblaze it. Oh. Okay. Well, that kind of sucks. I'm pretty sure he's going to just have a lot of a lot of removal, right? Removal, counter spells. Uh, nah. We don't have any instant or sorcery in our graveyard. So he's looking for, uh, I guess, a land? Yeah, I feel that. I know exactly what that feels like. Get 
and a screw sometimes, man. So Chromium can't be countered. He, he becomes a 1-1 with Hexproof. Loses all his abilities. Let's try to go for the Trial of Knowledge. Kind of want to just keep getting land so I can play Meteor Golem and then have a counter to protect him. Oh, we counter, we counter Sublime Epiphany. Since Chromium can't be countered, we just counter that. Silver Raven, right? Yeah. And we did not want him to have Sublime Epiphany. Place Chromium. Although he could have flashed it in. Flying 7-7. Seven, seven. So pretty much you get this down and you just have a full hand and you just keep attacking. Because your opponents can't do anything about it, huh? It's, is that is that what I'm is that the vibe I'm getting? Um Let's not do anything right now. So now Godfrey statue is slowly gonna eat at him. Uh, the only the only thing is now it's just what do we what do we do? So solve the equation calls five there, no? Yeah, five. I, I didn't see this other land over here. Pay five, go tutor. Probably gonna get something for this Godfro statue or Thassa. Thassa's not really doing nothing to him right now. And yeah, probably not for a while. I kinda have to find a way to get rid of this. I guess he got that Doom Scar just in case. Uh let's let's do this right now. So he becomes a one one so we don't take seven. This card is the crux of fate. Uh, I think we play Shipwreck Dowser here. Maybe maybe go get back to Saw coming or the Blink of an Eye. We can keep making him... We can keep making him use the... Chromium's ability. I think that's a good idea. Although he does have... He does have the Doom Score there, you know what I mean? So it's like, he's gonna board wipe anyway. So he might as well get it sent back to his hand. If he's gonna, if he's, if he, if he's just gonna board wipe, why not get it sent back to your hand? Because now this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go get back the blink of an eye, hold the mana up, and then if he doesn't board wipe, if he boards wipe, I'll just blink of an eye on my shipwreck dowser. So he loses his chromium. He should have just let that happen. I'm gonna take the seven here, right? So he does nothing. So I guess let's try to bounce the chromium again. Okay, so he does he does get rid of the shipwreck dowser because he knew that was gonna be a problem. Now we try to play meteor golem. I mean, isn't it isn't it just gonna die anyway to the Doom Scar? And he knows that we will win. So real quick, what I wanted to go over was, I mean, he's got the Doom Scar here for three mana. I know it says five there, but it's foretold. And he, you know, maybe he could have just Doom Scarred where, but he's not drawing any cards. See, I mean, he got rid of Sphinx's Revelation. I don't know why you get rid of that with so many cards, but so much land. Why would you get rid of that? Because you know, you need the cards to keep having Chromium activate. He probably could have built it a little bit better with more draw cards. I mean, it was smart putting the sweepers in, but he doesn't get indestructible. So it's not going to help you. All right, guys, that's the deck. Uh, I'm doing this one a little bit different. I'm putting the deck list at the beginning of the video just because it is a budget list. And so I'm going to give my thoughts here now. Of course, it's budget. It's going to be difficult to go up against some of these decks. That is the downside of playing budget decks. But what I was trying to get through is that you can still have fun and still be pretty competitive playing these budget decks. I'm going to be making more in the future. I just wanted to try to get, you know, some content out there that's budget friendly because I know that a lot of people in Arena don't have all the rares and mythics because there's a lot of people that's new to the game. And I figured why not make a budget list for these people that don't have all the rare and mythic wild cards to go craft a good deck. But there's a lot of upgrades you can do to the deck. Like, for example, you know, you can throw in Castle Vantress, which is a rare land from Throne of Eldraine. Hall of the Storm Giants is also good. For six mana, you can have it become a 7-7 
with Ward 3, and that's going to just be a pain in the butt for your opponent to stop. You can run stuff like Brainstorm. You can run stuff like As for Toad, which lets you play a free spell once the counters on it are that spell's mana cost or less. So Search for its Kanta is really good to help you churn through your deck and get the cards you need. I mean, these are all blue staples that you want to put in your decks. You know, Midnight Clock, that since you are playing the long game, you're going to want to reshuffle your hand because the hour counter goes on it at every upkeep. So it's pretty much six turns. Since you are playing the long game, you know, why not have this? And it gives you mana and you can reshuffle your hand, which in this deck you've seen that your hand goes pretty fast. And even though with all the draw spells we have and all the draw ETBs we have, it's still hard for us to actually draw cards because our opponents will remove our creatures so that is the downside of the deck you know commit is a good it's a good rare card to put in the deck precognitive perception corn's temporal sundering which your thassa is legendary and it has indestructible so it's really hard to remove unless it gets bounced but corn's temporal sundering you can return up to one target creature on one target non-land permanent to its owner's hand and you take an extra turn you have time warp of course uh river's dubuque gotta play this in the deck because of if you're playing a deck that runs a lot of creatures, you gotta try to get this River's Rebuke. And then, you know, when you have those cards, you can play stuff like Cure Best of Sea God, you can play Seagate Restoration, the land, you can have it as a land or heavy draw cards, you can play Mass Manipulation. Hallbreaker Horror is a good one because it has flash and you can hold the mana up for a counter spell or you can play Hallbreaker Horror. There's just a lot of good rares and mythics that you can put in the deck to make it really, really solid and really, really competitive. Thassa is one of those commanders that will actually take you far and is it actually is a lot of fun if you can make the right build for it. That's the budget deck, guys. Let me know what you guys think of that. Let me know any cards that you would put into it because I know it took me about an hour and a half to make this deck to actually make it where I thought it was pretty decent. So let me know what you guys think of it. Comment down below and please consider subscribing. I will be doing Kamigawa decks as soon as they come out. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.